Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back, and watching. I do appreciate it. Hope your day's going really well. I'm in Luminar 4 today, and I'm having fun. I'm making a little bit of magic, as I like to say, which is basically taking a shot that really was not much of anything and turning it into something that I find interesting or beautiful or cool or whatever. And that's easy to do, and it's quick in Luminar 4. So let me show you my photo. Here it is, something from the Loire, if I said that correctly, Valley in France, where they have all these chateaux. Stunningly gorgeous place. Anyway, um, just a daytime shot, cloudy. You know, I don't actually mind the shot. I like these kind of skies, but it's a whole lot cooler if you have that kind of sky on it. So I'm gonna reset these and walk through this workflow. It's just quick, simple, easy, but mostly it's fun and you ought to be having fun. So let me show you how I did it. Okay, first thing, obviously, obviously, was a sky replacement. I'm gonna do sky selection, custom sky. And I did a video about Matt Seuss's Sky Pack. I've been using that and loving it. I'll put a link to that video there. I'll also put a link down below if you want to purchase that pack yourself. Um, I have this sky here. It's got a beautiful Milky Way in it. It's got some gorgeous colors. You stick it on there and then just like boom, you know, your photo looks awesome. There you go. Now, I needed to fix some lighting in the foreground and things like that. We're going to get to that in a minute. Um, and one of the best ways to do that is start with Relight Scene. I'm going to like 62, 63, something like that. And that helps quite a bit, to be honest. I think the photo looks great already. Um, but I gotta finish selling it as a night shot. So that's where I start hopping around to other filters. And my preference, actually, you know what? I'm gonna take sky temperature down a little bit. That's a great little slider, by the way, in the uh, AI sky replacement. Um, I like blue skies anyway, whether it's a daytime or blue hour. Um, and if it's a Milky Way, I like it to be kind of blue as well. So um, I'm gonna do that. But here's what I do. I just jump into the different filters. I always pretty much start with light, and I prefer to go through the tabs in order. So I'm starting the Essentials tab. I'm going to start with light. Now, the first thing to do is work on temperature and tint. As I mentioned already, I'm going to do some blue, something like that. But I also want to get a little bit of that tint in there, so a little bit to the right with the tint. It's a subtle change, but I think those colors, especially with the Milky Way, go really well because I think it helps accentuate some of this stuff here. But, um, you know, it's just a personal preference on color. Okay, next up then is Smart Contrast. And I'm going to go pretty high on that, like mid-50s, maybe something like that. I think I'm going to bump up the highlights just because I kind of want to pop those, um, uh, you know, little pinpricks of light that are in the sky. But I'm going to take the shadows down because, you know, I'm not really done sort of selling it as a night shot. It's still too bright in the foreground. We're going to fix that here in a minute. But I think already the photo is looking a lot better. I mean, certainly compared to the original, um, I think we've come a long way. And that's, again, the part of the beauty and the magic of Luminar 4. Okay, while I'm here, I'm just going to go ahead and pop into AI structure. I'm going to give that a little bit of a boost, like 22, 23, something like that. Um, I like to have my, whenever I have a structure like that, like a man-made structure, I like to give it a little bit of crispiness, just a little bit though, um, especially in a scene like this because it's darker. Um, obviously, it's night. Um, you know, I wouldn't expect to have as much clarity, so I wouldn't expect it to be really super sharp and crisp visually. Like, uh, like if it was a daytime shot, I think I'd probably amp up the crispiness a little bit more. But because I'm sort of selling it as a night shot, I'm trying to give a little bit because I like that look, but I don't want to overdo it. So just kind of how I think about things. Okay, now I'm going to pop over to the Pro tab and get Adjustable Gradient. First thing I'm going to do is on uh, set the orientation, actually. So I'm going to click on that. And I just want to drag this a little bit lower. And what I want to do is take the, the warmth down in that top. Uh, and again, I'm just kind of selling it as a night shot. I think it ought to be a little bit cooler looking overall. And I just kind of like that color or tint uh, or temperature, I should say. That temperature is kind of my preference for night shots. Uh, and then I'm going to go into bottom, make a couple of adjustments here. First one is the exposure is just way too bright. So I'm going to pull that down pretty significantly. I'm going to go like 75 or something. Um, because again, you know, you're expecting it to be dark. If you've got a Milky Way like, way like that, you're expecting a dark photo. And frankly, it's probably not quite dark enough. Um, so I wanted to darken that quite a bit. Then I'm going to take these shadows down. I'm going to pull those down a little bit. Again, just trying to, to do that, um, you know, create that night that, or the perception of night. Uh, and then I'm taking the warmth down as well. Again, maybe not quite that much. Again, just kind of, I feel like it should have a blue tint overall. So oh, let me hit done so that... Uh, the, the gradient uh, line is gone. But again, there's the before and there's the after. So I like what we've come to, but at this point, I think I'm missing one thing, and that is going back to this first tab and getting the vignette filter. So first things first, I just kind of want to bring the uh, the amount down. Um, 
I don't want to overdo it, but I'm going to go you know fairly high uh, and size maybe about like that. Um, but I want to choose my subject. I want my subject to be right there in the center, kind of in the castle. Um, and then I want to take inner light and I want to bump that up a bit because I do want to have a little bit more visibility like that. Um, and I think I'm going to take the feathering to 100 just so that the edges of the vignette are really smooth. Um, you don't want a uh, something like that. Um, that's what feathering does if you're not familiar. Uh, all the way to the left you get a really hard edge and I want it to be as soft and gentle as possible. Um, it's almost like the light of the Milky Way is coming up from behind the castle um, and kind of flooding over it and then I just wanted to brighten that center um, with the uh, with the inner light. I may have gone a little high um, but I just kind of like that look. So that's pretty much the the edit there. You know again this is made up um, just to be clear because obviously if you look at the, the, the before shot this was like a before lunch you know, 10 in the morning probably and my after I'm just converting it into a night shot. Now I do need to go remove these people because you know, if you're there in the middle of the night and you're getting a Milky Way, if that's even possible at this spot, I don't know. You know, reality's out the window. I'm just having fun. But um, you're not going to expect to see a couple of tourists there. So I need to go in with the eraser or the clone and stamp. Get rid of those. I'll do that on my own time. Um, and if you don't know how to use eraser or clone and stamp, that video there talks about some of those canvas tools. Um, but that's it. I'm just making magic, just having a little bit of fun. I just want to show you some of the cool, fun things you can do, not just with sky replacement, but using the different filters to sort of craft the look that you're uh, going for, which, you know, for me also not just had to do with putting the night sky, but it also getting the temperature to match um, and getting the colors and the light levels to kind of all go together. And I feel like it kind of uh, flows, for lack of a better word, right? There's the before green grass, you know, tan walkway, kind of tan castle. And now it looks a lot more like a night shot. And, you know, if, if you weren't paying attention, it was hard to miss. But when I added the sky filter, I mean, look at that, how well it did putting the Milky Way behind the trees, which is one of the reasons I wanted to use the Milky Way, because it's one thing to put on a dark night sky or something, but to have that Milky Way and be able to still see a bunch of it kind of coming through the trees, this is super cool. Anyway, that's Luminar 4. That's just a fun little me making magic kind of thing. And I hope you found it helpful. And if you haven't yet subscribed, I got plenty more videos coming. So please do subscribe, like, share, comment. Let me know your feedback. Let me know other videos you'd like to, uh, to see. I've got a number of deep dives planned. Um, and if you haven't seen my tutorial series, you can check that out there, which is 10 videos. that kind of takes you from A to Z in terms of getting started with Luminar 4. Hope you find it helpful, my friends. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. I'll see you really soon with another video. Have a great day. Thanks again. Take care and adios.